Welcome to Daily Devotion with Ken Gurley. Devotions designed to inspire you on your daily walk with God. Here's your host, Ken Gurley. Good Monday morning to each and every one of you. Happy Monday. Happy Eclipse Day. Happy Apocalypse Day. I'm hearing all sorts of things today. I'm hearing the whole world is going crazy today. Anyway. And but here we are. The sun is rising out there. Don't know how much longer it's going to be with us, but the sun is rising. And we are here. We are here to encourage one another in the Lord and to be together as we are Monday through Friday to lift up the name of the Lord, lift up one another and to encourage one another. AJ, good to see you. Leela, Morris, Becky. This is the Daily Devotion family. If you are stumbling into this room, we this is a good space. Yes, no padded walls here. No straight jackets in this room. No. We're all here. We're not compelled to be here. We're here because we want to be here. Each and every morning, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Central. Thank you for being a part of of this and um, programming note or two uh, toward the end. Well, basically, let me just give you a hint now. Uh, I'm going to be in the Philippines a few days and uh, meaning that as I come to you from over there, I can't take everything with me. It's going to be, it's going to be wild, but I believe we're going to get through and uh, we're going to get to stay in touch. Looking forward to a great trip, meeting our Filipino brother and his sisters, and also the leaders from another great country coming for just a good time of brushing shoulders and strengthening one another in the Lord. Um, Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk about an eclipse. Uh, No, I have no strange conspiracy theories today. There have been enough of them out there. I, I mean, I We've we've had earthquakes, tornadoes. We have an eclipse. We have an, a, a cicada, a, a locust issue emerging. We've got a comet that has devil horns. We've got blood moons. We've got we got everything happening in the first two weeks of April. So whatever you just take your pick this week of a conspiracy theory. You you just grab it. It's yours. You run with it. Um. But an eclipse happens ever so often. The Bible speaks of them. But what I want to talk about today is something more common than an eclipse in the natural realm, but in the spiritual realm. And the verse that comes to mind is Jeremiah 15. The prophet is speaking against Jerusalem, speaking specifically about Jerusalem's destruction and um, likens the source of Jerusalem's demise is that she's turned her back on God. She's drifted from God. God told Jerusalem, uh, this is really bad. <clears throat> when God says, I'm just getting tired of hearing you repent, getting tired of it. And in verse nine of that chapter, it says, the mother of seven grows faint and gasps for breath. Her son has gone down while it is still day. She's childless now, disgraced, humiliated. The mother of seven, it's a picture of a perfect person, but somehow her imperfections triumph. And we read that the sun goes down. Her sun goes down while it is still day. I see in that a spiritual eclipse when daylight, the expected, anticipated daylight, suddenly becomes the unexpected, unanticipated darkness. God told Jerusalem, you've gone backwards. Her sun's gone down while it's still day. It's a moral, it's a spiritual eclipse. You you can call it what you want to, getting cold in the Lord, drifting from God, backsliding. People drift. We didn't start this thing, folks. Onita Hilda, we didn't start this thing to quit. We started this journey to reach life everlasting. To make to permit God to finish what he started in our lives. We've got to keep moving forward. 
I guess backslider would be one going backwards, but we want to, we're commanded to follow on to know the Lord, to continue in this, to ask, seek, and knock, and to keep on ask, seeking, and knocking. That's what we're trying to do. We don't want to turn around. We don't want to go back. Can I just say, you and I are nearer to heaven than ever before. We're nearer to the coming of the Lord. We're nearer to what God is doing in our lives. There's no time to turn back now. Don't turn back. Don't turn back. Hey, thank you, Yolanda. I just saw you posted from the last devotion. What a great, she always does a great uh, note taking. Thank you for that. Follow on, follow on. Life's not a plateau. It's not a flat service. No status quo. No, you can't be stationary. The Lord said the land I'm taking to you is one of hills and valleys. It's got slopes. If you're not moving forward, you're not standing still. You're moving backwards. Have you found that to be true? If you're not intentionally pursuing growth, you slide. Uh, the Bible speaks of the course of this world, that it's like a huge stream that's moving. You can't just decide to float or you're going to be going downstream. I don't float, don't slide. It has a high cost to everybody around you. Damages your witness, damage your relationship with God, damage people around you. Do you remember when King David have a, had a moral relapse? God told him his moral failure caused those who didn't know God to blaspheme and mock him. When we have a relapse, a spiritual eclipse, it comes at a gigantic price. But how does it happen? I don't know. Uh, ultimately, it's a condition of our heart. Every man is drawn away when he's enticed by his own lust, but maybe it's aggravated by hanging out with the wrong folk. Hey, Daily devotion, people. We're we're the right people. Yeah, yeah. You're you're, the, you're Deborah, Rod, Jackie. You're just the right people. People shouldn't backslide hanging around on daily devotion. No, this is the right group to hang out with. Although there's one or two, you, you, you just let me know. And <laughs> not really <laughs> hanging out with the wrong people. The Bible says when Solomon was old his wives turned his heart after other gods. Well, now there is a problem there. I think he had 300 wives, 700 concubines, 1,000 visa bills. That, you know, that, come on. That, that sounds like a little too many wives to me. I don't know. I wouldn't want to violate your convictions, but that sounds like a lot. Yes. But the point is, is that they turned his heart. Hanging out with the wrong company. The, Solomon would earlier write that, a companion of fools is destroyed and making friends with an angry man becomes a snare to the soul and all too often others attitudes determine our spiritual altitude. They are the weights in our lives. Spending time with the wrong people, spending time in the wrong places. Matters what you see, matters where you're hanging out. The preacher Jeremiah said, my eye affects my heart. People think they can just be in a terrible environment all the time and it doesn't affect them. At least, at the least, such things are spiritually unhealthy. At the worst, they can lead to a spiritual eclipse. It matters. These are the, uh, the eye gates, the ear gates, you, you know, the, the gates, our senses, and it matters what we let into our gates. So we, we, we have to watch that. You got wrong people, wrong places. What about wrong passions? Jesus told the church of Ephesus, you left your first love. Now we're getting closer to the heart of what a spiritual eclipse is all about. Solomon in Proverbs 14, 14 spoke of the backslidden in heart. It's not just about wrong people, wrong places. It's just something's gone wrong in our heart. Something on the inner man. And so today when all of the world or is going to be fastened on an eclipse, the eclipse we should be watching is a spiritual one. 
that's the the eclipse that we should pay attention to. And someone or something else has taken priority. Or like an eclipse, someone or something else has come between us and the Lord. It's in that passage of Jerusalem, God's people had a heart problem. They would walk away from God, say, whoops, and they would repent. And it happened again and again and again. I don't know how long it takes for God to get weary. I mean, he's the one that told us to forgive 70 times seven every day. They must have done a whole lot of sinning for God to get weary of their repenting. I mean, if he tells us 490 times a day, you should forgive someone if they ask you to be forgiven. Wow, that's a whole lot of sinning for God to get weary of repenting. But God grew weary. He likened their moral condition to the sun going down while it's day, an eclipse, a premature sunset, a premature close of the day, an unfulfilled life. It's like in the ancient world. If you see an ancient graveyard, one of the common symbols that they use to mark a grave is is a shaft of a column that's been broken in two, indicating that it is cut off. It was cut off from its objective, from the sky. Let me introduce the analogy of an eclipse to you today. Amplified version of James 117, every good and every perfect, free, large, full gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of all that gives light in the shining of whom there is no variation, no rising, no setting, or shadow cast by his turning as in an eclipse. That's James 117 Amplified. There are only two teams, just two teams. Daylight team, that's led by God. First work of God is to speak light into darkness. He is light. His city in Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem, there is no darkness, no light. First John 1, 5, 7, God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him, walk in darkness. We lie, do not tell the truth. But if we walk in the light, he is in the light. Oh, praise God. Here's the verse. We have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Light is the ultimate disinfectant, not only in a natural realm, but in a spiritual realm. Walk in the light. There's a verse of scripture in the Old Testament I like. It's where Isaiah said to Israel, O house of Jacob, come ye, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Isaiah 2, 5. The apostle Paul said, we don't walk in darkness. We walk in light. We are children of the light. 1 Thessalonians 5, 5. Jesus told the woman caught in the act of adultery that those who follow him would not walk in darkness, but in light, that he is the light of the world. John 8, 12. If you walk in the light and hate everybody, you're not really walking in the light. There's the light team that's led by God. There's the darkness team. It's led by three, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Yes, John said the whole world lies in wickedness and darkness. The carnal man, enmity with God, full of treachery. Patriot, strife, envy, greed, uh, lust, wantonness, a hundred different works of darkness, works of the flesh. Then there's the prince of darkness, once called Lucifer, the light bearer, the enemy of our souls, wants to lead people into darkness. If you follow God, if you're on the daylight team, you walk in the light. If you follow either the world, the flesh, or the devil, you walk in darkness. And the lost are walking in the darkness. Jesus, Jesus said, this is the condemnation of the world. The lights come, but people still choose darkness because their deeds are evil. So let me just review this before we set up this analogy. God is light, his people walk in light. There is darkness and the lost walk in darkness. To love God is to reject the darkness, to love the world, is to reject the light. 
And maybe this is a good way to view our walk with God. When we were born again, he brought life. What's this, that old song we used to sing? Country Western singer, who was it? Uh, Hank Williams, I saw the light. I saw the light no more in darkness, no more in night. It's like a sunrise. When you are born again, it's like the, the sun has risen in your world. And here we go. And all of the creatures of the night go to sleep. This is what, this is what we're hearing about during the last total eclipse, is that the domestic, domesticated animals returned to their nests. The chickens went back to the roosts. The domesticated animals settled down for night. And the night creatures began to wake up. It's one of the things uh, Austin is, in Texas, is nearly in the path of totality today. And it's one of the curious things up in the hill country. They're wondering during the eclipse if the bats will start coming out of their caves. Because there's a principle there. The tigers return to their lairs when the sun rises. The lions go to their dens. The bats back to the caves. The carnivorous creatures of the night go to sleep. It's the same in the spiritual realm. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Those old battles begin to recede. They turn away. They go to elsewhere. Or in the analogy that we're looking at, when a person steps from darkness into life, all of the old things he fought against begin to go away. They return to their natural dark habitats. They go to sleep. The light drives them away. As those creatures of darkness make their exit, then the domesticated qualities of love, joy, peace, creatures of the day begin to make their entrance. Those who will feed and pasture in the light, walk in the daylight. Anger is replaced with peace. Hatred is sent away to its lair and displaced by love. Fear gives way to faith. You're walking in the light as he is in the light. But here's what's happening when a spiritual eclipse takes place. Something gets between you and the source of the light. We disobey God. And we turn from the light. It's permitting feelings and desires to run rampant. It's picking up yesterday. It's letting the sun go down prematurely. Where it was once perpetual morning, now evening comes. Enough light to see, but it's getting difficult. Those that walk in light, Jesus said, they will not stumble, but those that walk in the night will fall. A spiritual eclipse is not pretty. No, it's journeying from the land of bright light into the land of twilight. It's going back into darkness. It's Demas looking back to the world he left. It's the mixed multitude following the fire by day, by night, the cloud by day. It's a mixed multitude looking back to Egypt. It's the prodigal throwing off the father's favor and going to a strange country. It's a spiritual eclipse. The sun is going down while it's yet day. What happens during an eclipse? Well, something comes between one object and another. In our case, the earth and the source of light. I read Annie Dillard once wrote, she's a Pulitzer Prize winning author. In teaching a stone to talk, she described climbing a hill in Yakima, Washington to see a total eclipse of the sun. She said when the eclipse began, the lunar shadow chased towards them at 1,800 miles per hour. She could feel, actually feel the temperature drop. Then she said, something got my attention. The birds returned to their roosts. You see, animals don't have clocks. 
They only know light and darkness, heat and cold. And when the sun retreats, whether it's 12 a.m. or 12 p.m., the creatures of the day retreats. The sheep return to their fold. When a spiritual eclipse takes place, love slumbers, peace retreats, joy hides, faith folds its hands for a little nap. Gone are the virtues. These are creatures of the day and those creatures of the night that have been put to sleep a long time ago begin to stir in their caves. The bat begins to flap its wings. The lion shakes its mighty mane. The leopard growls. The carnivores, the creatures of the night, began to emerge and wreak havoc. Listen, listen, the works of the flesh go in bundles. You just read the long list of the work of the flesh, especially in the general epistles, dozens of them. You let one thing get in orbit around your life. One thing come between you and the source of your life. And soon you're not just fighting that one thing. You're fighting every creature of darkness because you can't control which work of darkness will wake up in your life. You're going to end up fighting them all. You may have once had a problem just with your short timber, but now, wow, I'm fighting envy like never before. Jealousy, unforgiveness. What is going on? The sun has gone down while it's yet day. You once had a problem with lust, but now you're you're fighting stealing, cursing, lying. You once had a problem with nicotine, but now you're battling all sorts of drugs and alcohol. You once had a problem. What? You can't choose what work of darkness awakens when the light goes out. You may have once had a problem telling the truth, but now you're battling selfishness and greed like never before. How? Because once something gets between you and the source of light, all of the night creatures begin to wake up. Just a typical evening around a backslider's house. And the creatures of the night, they despise the brilliance of God's presence. The carnal mind is at enmity. It is a mortal battle with God. Your solution is to join forces, to rejoin forces with the light. You can't fight all these night creatures. I don't care how much willpower you have. You can't fight all the, the creatures of darkness. That shadow of the eclipse comes at 1,800 miles an hour, and that shadow can leave at the same speed. And God's able to bring light back into your life. He's able to do it swiftly. You just have to walk in the light. And as you walk in the light, these creatures of the night, they just go back where they came from. And the day creature, the day creatures begin to come out. I love testimonies. I love testimonies. Because there's just something happens when the light of God's love bathes a person. Things they thought were a part of them that they couldn't get rid of. Suddenly, it's like they're drugged and put to sleep and all those old habits just begin to fall away. As the light, we walk in the light as he is in the light those creatures of darkness go to sleep. Oh, yes, they do. Oh, yes, they do. They just go back to the lairs from which they came. And those day creatures, they come out. Whew. The person God meant for you to be begins to emerge. When the moral eclipse and spiritual eclipse passes and leaves at 1,800 miles an hour, or better yet, at the speed of light, 
186,000 miles per hour squared, per second squared. What would it happen? What would happen? What would happen? Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. I don't believe. I don't believe. All right. I do believe we have to adequately describe the problem. I believe it was Kettering. Was it Kettering? General Electric said that it, a problem adequately described is halfway to the solution. Something like that. I believe that. But the Lord never points out a problem without offering a solution. Here's the solution. Return to God. Let God arise. You notice that? Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise as the sun that shines in all of its strength. Whew. And step into that sunshine. And see those night creatures go back to sleep. This is why. This is why I feel like we waste a lot of time. People struggling with various issues and we've all got them. We spend so much time addressing that issue, but we don't address the light dark, the overwhelming thing. You get into the light. And what does what that old song say, Delisa? And the things of this earth grow strangely dim. They just recede in the light of his glory and grace. Let the Lord shine on you. I pray for everybody today. A lot of schools are being let out today and a lot of people are traveling to get into the line uh, of totality where they could see the eclipse. I think there's some 30 million people or something they said. I'm hearing of small towns. Someone told me the town of Dangerfield, Texas has got tens of thousands of people coming in uh, all up and down the line. Uh, I just, I know it's probably a once in a lifetime thing to get to see it. Be careful with your vision and uh, have the right way to view it and, um, and be safe. Be safe out there on the road. But when you see an eclipse and think of it, remember, just stay in the light and the Lord's going to take care of you. Thank you for being a part of this today. God bless Facebook, like, follow, YouTube, subscribe, share with the whole wide world. Look forward to seeing you again later, later as in 24 hours later. Good to see you. God bless. May the Lord be with you. Thank you for sharing in daily devotion with Ken Gurley. We pray this ministry has been a source of encouragement and strength to you. Please be mindful that your financial support enables us to meet with you each day. To give a donation or connect with us, visit our website at kengurley.com. There you will also find the latest books, podcasts, and resources. Blessed, 90 Days to Change Your World is Pastor Gurley's latest book. You can get your copy of this life-changing book at kengurley.com. May God's favor rest on you in every way until we meet again.